Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, I've got another amazing poll that I want to share with you. We got some really awesome data that I want to share. A really good group here. Lots of awesome comments. And I conducted this poll probably about 10 days ago. And I want to share this information with you. You're going to love it. Today, we're going to be talking about the ideal DMRs. And we're going down the list of what you guys think is the perfect DMR in a semi-auto that somebody could possibly have. And I think the results probably are going to surprise some of you. Before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at CMMG. If you are looking for anything in the AR realm, they are your go-to people. They are on the cutting edge of technology in terms of some of this forward-thinking stuff that they're doing. They've got their bufferless system with the Descent. Of course, everybody knows about guns like the Anvil and the Mark 47. Of course, their 22 conversion kits are amazing. They even do P90 barrels, believe it or not. They've got some awesome stuff going on. If you want to do business with CMMG, use the code IV8888, and you can get yourself a nice discount, and that also lets them know that I sent you. Thanks to CMMG for supporting our videos, and we're going to get right into this poll. All right, over 33,000 votes. Wow, this is such a great pool of data. Let's get into it. If you could only have one of the following rifles as a dedicated semi-auto in a DMR role, what would it be and why? A DMR means designated marksman rifle. And generally, just so you know, a DMR is usually something like a 7.62 or 6.5 or long action, large platform. Our choices were the AR-10 slash SR-25, the SCAR-17 slash 20S, the M14 slash M1A, the G3 slash PTR-91, and the FNFAL. Those were our choices. And of course, I asked people to comment as well. And we have a bunch of comments. There's over 940 comments. And I'm going to go down the list. We're going to read some of the highest comments. But first, let's look at the data. Wow. All right. 33,243 votes on this poll. And this was conducted here on YouTube. In the past, I've done some Twitter polls. But YouTube has a poll function as well. And arguably, I think the data is pretty telling because it po polls just my audience and many of you follow me as gun people. This is great data. 58% of respondents preferred the AR-10. 14% of respondents preferred the SCAR-17. 17% 17 of respondents preferred the M14. 4% preferred the G3 and 8% preferred the FNFAL. Now, I do understand that I was limited to five choices, and there were some people that commented, hey, why couldn't we have this particular gun or that particular gun? There were some votes for like the SVD or the or the uh, uh, the PSL or something like that, like a 7.62 by 54 semi-auto like those, which would fit into that similar role. Um, so just a, a shout out. I do think that that's a great gun. I just couldn't include it. I kind of figured the FAL might fit into that role a little bit more than those guns, but apparently I misjudged. However, the overwhelming majority of the people, 58% of you, prefer the AR-10, which is essentially just a giant grown-up AR-15 in 7.62 by 54. Of course, you can do AR-10s in a variety of different calibers, but for the purposes of this, we're going to mainly look at 6.5 Creedmoor and 7.62 by 51 NATO. All right, let's get into some comments here. I'm just going to sort them... Uh, by top comments, and I want to read the most top voted comments because I figured that if someone gave a comment a thumbs up, then that must mean that they agree with them. So if there's a lot of people agreeing on one particular comment, then we have to, I want to give that a little bit more, you know, kind of brevity here. Okay, let's get into this. Uh, BGST, I'm not even going to try to pronounce usernames, okay. As an FL, FAL lover, I have to admit it's the AR-10. They have more parts availability slash variety, more commonly known manual of arms, and generally have more knowledge available on how to make them run well. That was 101 upvotes on that particular comment with 17 replies. Um, I have to agree. That hits the nail right on the head. Look, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to be honest here. I voted SCAR-17 because that, that's kind of my jam. I like the SCAR-17 a lot. It's a lightweight gun. It's easy to handle. It's accurate, right? The SCAR-17 can fill a role of a DMR in certain situations, but can also be used as a battle rifle. And I think it fills both of those roles quite well. I do like the AR-10. The AR-10 has not been without their teething issues over the years. But, of course, you look at guns like the Stoner M110, uh, of course... 
a fantastic gun that is set up beautifully with a purpose-built suppressor and a perfectly tuned gas system and, and really set up to run exactly like a top. Um, those are great guns. The AR-10 is a great gun that, if set up properly, can certainly deliver the goods. And I would, I would feel well-armed with any AR-10 that was running well. That's not to say the AR-10 has not been without its minor teething issues, right? AR-10s are known to be finicky, right? Whether they are ammo picky or whether they are uh, picky with magazines or whether they're picky about being suppressed versus being ran loud, um, AR-10s, just like some AR-15 platforms, can require a little bit of playing around to get them perfect, whereby I can't ever picture any time that I haven't pulled my scar out and has a, a, everything I've thrown, thrown in it and done so with amazing accuracy. I prefer the scar, but I can also understand, yes, why the AR-10 is totally, totally the top choice. Um, if you're familiar with the AR platform, it is obviously the, the, the proper choice. All right. Gator Bite says, I've always been a fan of the M14 and its children. It shoots great, hits hard, and it just feels right. That was 49 upvotes on that uh, on that comment. I have to admit, look, I, I have never been a huge Mini 14 kind of guy. I just haven't. Or I'm sorry, the, uh, the M14 kind of guy. Uh, M1A, like maybe the 16-inch SOCOM, like the, the little short uh, M1A would be a really cool gun. With the 16-inch barrel, uh, you know, if you were going to run a, an M14 variant with the longer barrel, I mean, believe me, like, there are some national match variants that do quite well, and they shoot well. Um, I've never been a big fan of the magazines. They're kind of big and heavy and bulky, and they take up a lot of space in a carrier, uh, whereby the FAL mags, the type of FAL mag that the, that the SCAR uses are a little slimmer, and I arguably, I think the mags are a little easier to load as well. Um, and I don't like the rock-in magazines on the M14. I never was a big fan of that. I like being able to drop the mag out easily. Uh, with the Mini 14, you have to grab the latch and rotate out. So to drop the magazine requires you to, essentially, it's the same movement as loading the magazine to unload it. Whereby on the SCAR, if I'm just you know using my, my, my firing hand, I can just drop the magazine while I'm already reaching for another one. So the mag changes are quicker on a gun like uh, the SCAR. And arguably, I would say the same issue exists with the FAL. I love the FAL, but it does use a rock-in magazine, which is fine. It just takes a little more time to, to run a rock-in than it does to, to run just one you can, you can slam straight home. So that's definitely an upvote for the AR-10 and the SCAR because the magazines are much easier to change out. The M14 is a great gun. I'm, I'm not saying it isn't, um, but I think there are better options. But there are obviously many people who chose uh, the M14, the M14 was the second largest category of upvotes. 58% of you preferred the AR-10, while 17% of you preferred the M14. Now, I could say also that I'm sure many of you have been involved in, the, in these wars over the last 20 years, and some of you were all, probably issued an M14 and a DMR chassis to use in urban sniping operations in, in all of these wars. So I can see where there would be an infinity for the M14 because you're familiar with it and because it probably saved your life in some situations. And you know what? That right there alone is reason enough to say the Mini 14, does, or I'm sorry, the M14 deserves its respect. All right, let's move on. Um, Goblin Shaman says, the buffer system from the AR-10 is really nice with 308. I agree. That was 101 upvotes. Obviously, a huge, huge factor in the success of the AR is how soft shooting it is and how accurate it is, for sure. And that buffer system does help quite a lot with that. Um, let's see. Reese G45 says, the AR-10, cheap magazines and an abundance of aftermarket support. Yet again, um, Chad and I did a video not too long ago, maybe a year ago, perhaps, where we talked about how parts support can be kind of difficult with some companies, right? So this is one area where the SCAR might have fell off in, in favor. Well, for one, SCARs are expensive. But two, if you have to replace parts on that thing, you better get your pocketbook out because they are expensive. I love my SCAR. Believe me, it is one of my favorite rifles. I love it. But if I had to replace something, you better believe it is very unfun, not only to locate the parts if they're in stock, but just to purchase and keep parts on hand can be quite unfun. I, I uh, actually recently went through and purchased a, a small set of parts. I think like just a, an additional bolt, extractor, a couple of charging handles, which 
uh, in the reciprocating charging handle version, that is one known issue with the SCARS is they can snap charging handles fairly easily. So I bought some extra charging handles. I bought some extra recoil spring assemblies, you know, with the whole recoil spring, uh, the whole assembly, you know, so like a, almost like an AK. It's, a, it's its own captured rod assembly or whatever. And I think, uh, yeah, maybe a couple of firing pins, you know, just some small basic parts. And gosh, that order wound up costing like 750 freaking dollars for some small parts that if I was ordering for the AR-10, I probably would have came in at a third of that price for the same parts, if le if not even less than that. Because the AR-10 is so common, because so many people support it, and there's so many different parts out there, not only aftermarket parts, but OEM parts as well, um, obviously the cost on those parts is going to be much more reasonable because how common they are. So that's a great... Uh, comment there and you were correct Reese okay uh, no count 7517 says the G3 PTR 91 the design is simple and durable it can be field stripped and reassembled in three minutes including taking the bolt and carrier group apart and there are plenty of par available parts to reduce felt recoil and increase accuracy it also just has that cool factor wow and that's 84 thumbs up votes for the G3 that's surprising because on the poll itself, only 4% of you said that they preferred the G3 over all the other options. So that's interesting. So uh, the G3 does have its fans and everything like that. I personally love the G3. I think it's great. It is a delayed roller blowback 308. So you're talking very smooth recoil, right? Great accuracy, which is nice. You know, it, it, in some cases, I'm not going to say it has like bolt action-like accuracy, but it can if you have a really good trigger pack, right? And as he said, you know, there are plenty of, of parts, right? You could add a nice muzzle brake on there to help with the recoil even more. You could have your, um, you know, a nice trigger pack maybe from a PSG or something. So there are some really nice triggers for the G3s, and, um, and they're great, and... Also, you don't have to rotate in the magazines. Now, you do have to kind of grab them and pull them out, though, even when they're empty. They kind of lock in there real tight. So you have to hold down that mag release, jerk it out, get it out of there, put the new one in there. And, and you, you have to give them a, a good little slap. You, you don't. It, it's not really a rock in, but it's also not just a straight lock where, like, if you're running a, a, a scar on bolt lock, for instance, and the bolt is locked to the rear and you put a fresh scar magazine you can just gingerly push that little sucker in there with a little bit of pressure and just lift your finger up and work the work the uh, you, you work the, the 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 bolt stop back and it's easy, right? Uh, the G3 is a gun you have to kind of manhandle a little bit, just like many of the delayed roller blowback designs. So that might be one detractor for some, but the G3 has held on. It is a great gun. Now we are discussing this from the standpoint of a DMR. Remember, so would the G3 be my first choice in a DMR role? If it's all I had, I would certainly use it, uh, just like I would use an M14. Again, I, I like to be mobile and fast, and I like to be able to move quickly if I need to. So again, my vote kind of still goes to the scar because I can fight with that gun. Like I, you're not going to be swinging around a big old heavy DMR M14 in a, in a in a EBR chassis or something like that, right? You're not going to be swinging around a giant stoner M110 to use in, in a in a street to street fight role where you're not in some stationary environment like a DMR would typically be used in. The scar can be used in both of those environments. I can still, you know, do a, a type of a, you know, Overwatch work with a, with even just a, a 16 inch barrel scar uh, 17 with a good optic on it. I can still do Overwatch work, but it's still light enough to maneuver and fight with. That's why it got my vote. Again, we are getting into another comment here that's going to kind of back me up here. So Tyler Corte, uh, 845, he says, The power-to-weight ratio of the SCAR is impressive. Yes, someone gets it. It is a power-to-weight ratio, right? It is a light gun that's easy to maneuver, but it's still accurate, and it still fires a reasonably powerful cartridge. Put some M80A1 ball ammo uh, with the 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 uh, tungsten penetrator whatever it is and that's in the a1 projectile in your scar and you've got a pretty nice combination for shooting through uh, just about whatever you need to shoot through and do it with a degree of accuracy that can hit point targets at five six maybe even 700 yards i wouldn't try to push my 308 scar with a 16 inch barrel past like maybe 600 for serious work but 500 it, 500 and an in it, it's 
a great rifle for 500 yard work, especially like just a few hundred yards. That cartridge has got so much energy. It's a hard hitting sucker, which, uh, which I like. Okay. Uh, great, uh, comment there, Tyler. Okay. Common Sense Productions says the AR-10 has the highest accuracy potential considering the cost and the weight. Also, an underrated feature is that it's a takedown rifle, which is good for asymmetrical activities. Wow. What a comment. I would have never thought about that. You're right. It does take down really easily. You just drop the two pins and you can go to town if you need to. Maybe another point right that we could we could argue here okay towards the ar-10 I'm, I'm putting another vote towards the ar-10 even though i'm convinced that the scar is my jam all right okay so you have your stoner m110 or let's just say variant of which that you've built some type of accurized ar-10 platform or something like that all right cool you could have an extra upper in your three-day pack if you're providing overwatch and all right you get the call hey we're moving out in 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 two minutes all right, be ready to roll. Well, two minutes would give you more than enough time to pop your your fancy suppressed long range upper off of your AR-10, drop your 12 or 12 inch upper on your AR-10 or your 14 inch upper or whatever type of specialized upper with a red dot magnifier or something like that. Now you've converted your your DMR roll AR-10 into a fighting rifle. Why not have both? Okay, I could totally see that. Yes, modularity. Being able to pack the gun down small and sneak it in and out of a place without being detected, that's much harder to do with the SCAR. Now, granted, the SCAR does have a folding stock, but you're not going to do anything about that barrel. Once the gun's together, it's not really intended to be taken apart and, and carried around. It would be a little bit longer. You could, you could obviously assemble or disassemble any gun down to its pieces and then put it back together when you got where you were going, but... There's nothing easier than just popping two pins, and the AR does win in that category of being super easy to, to do that with. So, great point. Um, all right, just one more comment. Uh, I'm not going to bore you guys to tears. I mean, look, these are wonderful comments. I could read for hours because there's almost a 1,000 comments on this particular post. I would encourage you to go check out what your fellow uh, viewers are, are saying. There's some great points in here that are being made. I'm just going off the top voted comments. Samuel Farrell says the AR-10. It's a 308, which is probably the third most common military round available to me. Modularity of the weapon and all the sweet stuff you can throw on it make it a do-all rifle. It's very accurate, which of course you need for a DMR. I'm very familiar with the system compared to the other weapon systems too, which makes it personally more reliable. I don't have much time on the other rifles, so I have to go with what I know. If you take any person who's never ran a semi-auto DMR uh, type of role, whether in a shooting competition or whether in a military environment, or whether they're just not familiar with those platforms at all, most people are familiar with an AR-15. And if you give them an AR-10 and, and you just say, hey, all you really need to know here is that this is the same as your AR, it's just bigger. All right, most people, give them a little bit of time, they're going to be right behind that instantly. They're going to go, you know what? You're right, it's just bigger. So that is probably why the majority of people chose the AR-10, just because of the familiarity. Many people are familiar with the AR, so why wouldn't you just choose a bigger AR? It makes sense, right? Especially when the platform is so accurate, generally reliable. I say generally because they are not without their quirks, especially if you're going to build an AR-10 out, um, of your own, you definitely want to make sure you take your time and test it well and really vet it and set it up right because they're not without their little teething issues. But overall, I feel like 33,243 votes, that's a pretty solid pool of data. And that gives us a lot to go on. Again, 58% of you prefer the AR-10. So I think that's pretty telling that the AR is here to stay. I mean, that says a lot for the success of the AR as a platform, just as an idea. Direct gas impingement, semi-auto, auto-loading rifle, right? Uh, uses a rotating bolt. Uh, it's a combination of a piston and gas system, or uh, gas operation. So, direct gas impingement and, and piston. It's sort of a hybrid system. And I think that history has shown us not only in warfare, but just in the general civilian world in terms of competition shooting, three gun, whatever type of competition, hunting, long range shooting, recreational shooting, self-defense, whatever. 
that the AR as a tool is a fantastic tool. Whether you go with an AR-15 or whether you go with an AR-10, you're not going to go wrong. It's going to fill the role that you need it to fill, and it's going to do it with boring reliability. And I think that's why so many people cater to that particular result. Great pool of data. Guys, thanks so much for tuning into this video. I wanted to give some of my thoughts and share some of yours. And thank you so much for participating in this poll. And I hope you all have yourselves a great day. Make sure you check this poll out. And anytime I post a poll, make sure you comment and make sure you put your vote in. I might read your comment here on the channel. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourselves a great day. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.